harmonica is a strange instrument. I mean, what other instrument has you working on one technique for months and months until you can just play the most important notes that you need to actually like play this as a serious instrument? Well, that's the case with bending, and I'm sure that you've watched a bunch of other lessons and tutorials to fix your bends, and you probably have one or two holes that are still giving you trouble. Maybe you can't bend the notes deep enough. Maybe you can't get the notes in tune. Maybe the bends aren't activating at all. Well, in this video, I'm going to share all of my best tips for learning your bends, and I'm sure you're going to have a breakthrough. Let's start with just understanding the concept a little bit better. Bending is caused when the resonance cavity of your mouth increases in size on a hole that can normally bend, like the draw notes on holes one through six, or even the blow notes on holes eight through 10. The pressure difference pulls the pitch down, and this functions in the same way as a slide whistle. If you pull the slide out, the note gets lower. We make the resonance cavity of our mouths bigger by using our tongue, or at least that's the best way to do it. Your tongue needs to cave in to activate a bend. If you pucker, then your tongue needs to move further back in your mouth, okay? So imagine you have a wave coming at you and that's how your tongue's gonna move. It's gonna move like a wave and it's gonna go back, okay? So that's what you're gonna do if you're a puckering player. If you're a tongue blocking player, then your tongue is going to stay touching the comb like normal. And then this part of your tongue is going to drop down to activate a bend. And how far it drops is going to depend on the note that you're bending to. Now, you can trigger this by making certain sounds. The one that I find to be the most effective is this sound. It's kind of like something electrical getting powered down, right? You know, you're at the, you have the big lever, you pull it down and then the whole system goes. That's the idea. Now to make this sound in a way that's actually gonna help your bending, I want you to keep everything in your mouth static besides your tongue, okay? Try to only use your tongue to get this sound. So you're gonna keep everything else the same and you'll find that you need to move your tongue if you're keeping everything else the same to get that pitch change. So try it a few times. Now, if you are a puckering player, this might help you right away. If you tongue block, you should make this sound with your tongue locked on your bottom row of teeth, okay? Which is gonna like simulate your tongue touching the comb of the harmonica. So again, your tongue is going to touch the bottom row of teeth if you do it right, you're gonna be dropping your tongue in the same way that you do when you're bending. Okay, so after you've tried that a few times, try it on your harmonica and see what happens. It may be the ticket for you. You can also try saying other sounds like coo as well. Now, if you pucker, you may be thinking, Jonah, I bend with my throat or with my jaw and not my tongue. Is that wrong? Well, yeah. It, it's wrong. It's If it's working for you, like, fine, that's okay. Just know that you don't want any throat tension. So if you could do it without tension, hey, go for it, man. But if you feel tension, you're going to want to change your approach. As someone who has dealt with years of repetitive stress injuries in music, for me, it was from guitar, don't do what I did and fight through the pain and the tension. Just fix your technique instead. This is always the case. I mean, I went through this in singing, okay? Okay, I have a very forceful singing voice and for years my voice like hurt a little bit and sometimes I was like, oh, I like it because I get that little bit of distortion, you know, you get when someone who has a weathered voice. But what was I doing? I was fighting through pain and really I was damaging my voice. Now, are you going to damage your throat through bending improperly? I don't know, maybe. Um, so you probably just want to go and fix it, okay? All right, so from here, unless you are perfectly successful making that sound, we need to diagnose any extra problems that might be happening. So one is not bending deep enough. If you are using your tongue right, then it's probably due to your breathing. You need to breathe deep from your diaphragm. So here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna touch your diaphragm, okay? You'll feel your, feel your rib cage. You're gonna touch your diaphragm, big inhale. Exhale saying pss, like P-S-S-S, Now when you do this, try to hold that pss sound out as long as you can, like this. Pss. 
I'm telling you, do a few reps of that, try again, and you may notice a deeper bend. If this video is helpful so far, do me a solid and click the like button. It helps this video show up for other harp players on YouTube, and I appreciate the support. Okay, what if your bends still don't work? These tips didn't hit for you, what now? Well, it may be your harmonica and not you at all. So here's what you're gonna do. You grab a screwdriver, you're gonna take off the cover plates of your harp, and then I want you to look at your reeds. There's a little tiny gap underneath all of your reeds, and we want a little bit of a gap to be there, but not a large gap, and not so small of a gap that your reed doesn't move. We need to make those gaps about as small as possible without having the reed get stuck. This is called reed gapping. If it's too high, just push it down, okay? You can use your finger, you can use the screwdriver, whatever it is. If it goes too low and the reed's not moving, you're going to push it up, either inside from the comb with a screwdriver driver, or you can use a piece of paper to just gently lift the reed up. That's the safer way to do it. You may need to adjust the blow notes too, because when you bend, you're actually activating both reeds, the draw reed and the blow reed. So even if your draw reed is nice and tightly gapped, your blow reed might be making it impossible for you to bend, okay? You could do that by taking your tiny screwdriver and you stick it inside the comb and you're gonna push up and bend that blow reed up a little bit, which will close the gap. If you go too far, you're just gonna push it down instead. Now, quick disclaimer, you can damage your harps like this and I'm not responsible. That said, this is the fix for most folks. I have a dedicated video about this that I will link to at the end if you want a better look. So far, if you are using your tongue, you're breathing with your diaphragm and your reed are nice and gapped, bending should work to some extent. And from here, I suggest putting on a drone for the bend that you want to practice and tune up. So I would go on YouTube, search in cello drone, and then after it, put the note that you want to bend to. Like you would type in cello drone A to tune to the three whole step draw bend note on a C harp. You might want to just use a chart to figure this out or use your music theory knowledge. Then you play the matching track and just kind of get comfy. Use your ears to tune your note and you should be able to also use a tuner at the same time like harmonica bending trainer as well to get some visual feedback. But I really suggest you use your ears over using some visuals because when you're actually playing music, you don't have a tuner to look at to fix things. You only have your ears. So get used to using them in a way to help your bends stay in tune. Now, once you get your note in tune, you're gonna hold it to develop your muscle memory like this. And you're gonna do that a bunch of times. I also find this to be helpful. Choose a scale that involves the bend that you're working on and then go through the first few notes of the scale over and over like this. Let's say you're working on the three whole step draw bend and you wanna play the major pentatonic to practice it. Well, what I would do is something like two draw, three whole step draw bend, and then three draw, and I'd go through it over and over like this. You probably won't be as quick as this, but this is the process. This helps you hit your bends straight on, which is really useful because bends are a separate note that we're playing. And you don't always want to be able to uh, have to bend it down. Like you don't always want to start on the normal draw note and then bend down. Eventually you want to just be able to land right on that bend note. And this practice going up and down the few, a few notes of a scale, is gonna really help you get your bends straight on and get them in tune. It's also gonna prepare you for good scale practice sessions as well. If you don't know what I'm talking about, then get my scale cheat sheet download for the notes. You can find it for free, it's in the video description. From here, it just takes time and the right opportunities for you to actually use these bends and apply them to something. You don't wanna just learn them in isolation, you need to actually play some music. So for this, you can go learn some songs or start improvising with the 
major pentatonic or the blues scales. If you don't know where to get started, I have a paid course releasing very soon on February 15th, 2023 called Blues Harp Success. With my course, you'll have no shortage of songs to learn and I'll teach you how to improvise as well, as long as a whole bunch of other things. I hope one of these tips has helped you find a breakthrough for your bending. If you need more guidance on reed setup, then watch this video up here, especially before complaining that you broke your harmonica. Okay, watch that video and be gentle when you're doing any setup. All right, I'll see you next time. Peace.